Hello everyone, how's it going? This is Jack again and I just wanted to uh, share with you today the what I'm working on down in the basement and uh, basically I'm trying to do BGA soldering, uh, home based BGA soldering. I have a new Papilio board, it's an experimental. Uh, this is it here actually and uh, there's a quick look at it but you can see that it uses a BGA chip I actually assembled and uh, soldered probably about four or five of them and uh, only one one came out so the yield wasn't very good uh, I think the problem was not enough heat uh, was applied so I'm, go I'm going to attempt it again I'm going to try and repair uh, this particular one here and uh, I'm going to pay more attention to the, the thermal profile this time so uh, please uh, watch along with me okay thanks Okay, so uh, the first step is we're going to uh, go ahead and remove the BGA chip from the board. Um, and I have my trusty, dusty pancake griddle. Uh, bought it for $20 from Walmart, and uh, it works wonders. So I do also owe a big thanks to SparkFun for the idea and uh, a tutorial for using a... They use a, uh, a skillet and uh, I found pa pancake griddle works really great too. Okay, so uh, right now we're just heating it up and the goal is going to be to heat it up to the point where the solder balls are in a liquid state and then uh, I'm just gonna use this little vacuum squeezy thing here to, to uh, pull it off. All right, now another thing uh, that's pretty important is ventilation. So um, what I usually do is I have this um, fume remover or fume extractor uh, and then I also usually run a fan uh, to blow the fumes. Now if I have any trouble getting enough heat for the, the balls to liquefy then I have a I have here I have a hot air soldering station um, so we can use this to put a little extra heat We'll use this to put a little extra heat on the, uh, the BGA chip. Okay, so uh, the board's been on the plate for about uh, two minutes now. That's probably uh, getting pretty close to where we need it to be. So I think the board's where we need it to be. Let's just give it uh, a quick uh, try here. I'm going to pin it down with a dental pick. And uh, there it goes. It came right off. All right. Okay, so uh, now we have a board that has all the chips removed that uh, we want to replace, uh, but it's a it's pretty much a mess right now. We've got uh, a lot of solder paste on the on the pads, and uh, uh, so the next step is we're going to remove all that. Um, so I'm going to start by putting a lot of flux on. I have this uh, no clean flux here, um, but you can also just use flux that you get from Radio Shack. Um, it's a lot messier but it is actually more effective so um, I usually start out with this non clean stuff <clears throat> and if it doesn't do the job then I move to uh, the more hard <clears throat> the hardcore resin based stuff uh, that it does an amazing job alright so we've got the flux on and now we're going to, going to use some uh, solder wick from <clears throat> Radio Shack, and I'm going to get my magnifly, mag, magnifying ga glass, magnifying glass uh, down here so I can see what's happening. Alright, so uh, I started out with the water soluble soluble flux and uh, I'm not really getting the results I like so uh, I'm going to graduate to the big guns which is the um, resin based flux. It's a lot, it's messy uh, so it requires a lot of cleaning of the board but um, 
it's, it really makes a difference when you're trying to wick something up to have this type of uh, resin based uh, flux. Okay, well, uh, that resin uh, really made short work of it, but um, it did leave a nasty mess that uh, you come to expect when you use that stuff. So um, it uh, just makes it a little harder to clean it up, but I'll show you a trick that works really well uh, with cleanup for that. Okay, so uh, we have the chips removed, but we have this nasty re mess left over by the resin. We need to clean it up. Um, and the secret weapon is brake clean. So uh, you can go to your auto parts clean, or you can go to your auto par parts store, get yourself a bottle of brake clean, and it will take this uh, grease-based resin right off. Won't harm, won't harm the circuit board. Um, works pretty well. Not something I'd recommend using for anything other than prototypes, um, but when you want to get it cleaned up quick, it does it does the job. Now you also want to make sure you have good ventilation. This stuff is pretty pretty uh, smells pretty bad. Okay, so uh, you're going to want to follow up. Uh, once you've gone over it with brake clean and you've got all of the, it looks pretty degreased. Um, there's a lot of talk out there that the, the degreasers and that sort of thing will actually cause uh, shorts between pins and, and that sort of thing. So I always follow up with a good thorough cleaning with just standard isopropyl alcohol. Um, anything over 90% is good. The, the more over 90% you can get, so more like 99% is even better. And uh, voila, we have uh, a board that's pretty clean. I'd probably actually, uh, well, I was going to say I'd probably eat off of it, but, uh, you know, there's been brake clean on it and whatnot, so I probably wouldn't do that. But I, I would certainly put a BGA chip on there. So moving along, we have a clean PCB and it's ready for the FT2232 chip and a new BGA chip. So uh, we're going to start out by, I've got some solder paste and uh, this is solder paste in a syringe um, and I'm just going to lay down a, a bead of solder paste on the, the pins for the FT2232. And uh, so I just do a straight you know, I'm not worried about how much I'm putting on there um, because we're going to clean it up later. So I just put, uh, you know, a straight uh, bead across each, each row of pins. And that's really all you have to do because we'll clean it up later. All right, so I've got the FTDDI chip ready. Um, so I'm just going to set it down here and I'm going to use my little vacuum picker to uh, take it out put it right on there uh, and then I just use a, a dental pick and a magnifying glass to uh, place it and uh, also I use tweezers to hold down the, the PCB So you don't have to get it perfect, you just want to get it uh, <clears throat> lined up the best you can because surface tension of the solder is actually going to pull it into place <clears throat> and help with the alignment. Alright, so uh, now that that's, that's ready, 
we've got the, the BGA, the Spartan BGA chips. Uh, we're going to place that. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we've got some water soluble flux. This is going to help uh, reflow the pins or the pads, the BGA balls onto the onto the pads. So we're going to apply a generous amount of this. And we're just putting it over all the BGA p pads on the board. So the next step is to <clears throat> place one of these BGA pins or BGA chips. Uh, and for this, I'm simply, once again, using the vacuum pickup tool. Just dropping it. And uh, this is where you want to be a little careful and hope that, uh, that your silk screen markings are good to help you align the, the, the uh, chip on it. Now, once again, you want to uh, get this as close as you can, but uh, surface tension should suck it into place. Okay, so we're uh, ready to proceed here with adding heat. And I looked at the Xilinx data sheets at the thermal profile. And uh, what I saw is that we should, we should have about two to two and a half minutes of preheat and drying time where we want the temperature to be around 350 degrees. Um, and then we need a one to one and a half minute wetting time where the temperature should between, be between 400 and 420 degrees Fahrenheit. And we don't want it to exceed 430 degrees. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this and I'm using a, a stopwatch timer on the Android phone and we'll see how it goes. So I'm applying heat now. Um, I'm turning it up to 350. And uh, we will start the timer and uh, be back in two, two and a half minutes. Okay, as you can see, we just hit two and a half minutes. I'm going to reset the timer and uh, we're going to enter the wetting phase, which should be one and a half minutes. Um, and I'm also, uh, well, I'm gonna turn up the temperature all the way to the max, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm also going to use my hot air gun to just provide a little more temperature. want to do this for a minute and a half. Okay, so it's been more than a minute and a half, um, but it just doesn't feel like it's quite ready yet, so we're going to leave it on just a little bit longer. I think that the ramp up time probably took much longer to reach uh, 350 degrees, so I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. Okay, so uh, we're, we've been on a little bit longer than the recommended thermal profile, but uh, I think that uh, it looks good now, and I'm going to remove the heat. I'm going to turn the heat off, and we're going to let it ramp down on the skillet so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't provide thermal shock if we take it off. Okay, so now I'm holding this up and uh, hopefully you can see that the BGA chips on there, it's aligned pretty well, but um, there's a lot of solder bridges on the FT, FTDI chip, so uh, we're going to clean those up now. So we've got the soldering station and uh, the best way to clean these up is to use some soldering wick. And once again, use your flux. So put flux all over the pins.
pins and uh, simply use your your solder wick to, to clean it up. Now one thing that I'm doing that I'm not really talking about is, uh, uh, w you know, one thing that you can do also while you're using the solder wick, wick to clean this up is use a drag technique. So you start at one edge of the pins and you use your soldering iron, uh, you use your soldering iron to drag the solder from one side to the other. It'll collect it all on one side and then you just use your solder wick to, to wick it all up. So there we go. I'm going to hold it up and let's see if it'll focus in on it. Um, and those pins look like they're ready to go and there are uh, no solder bridges anymore. So it's pretty easy to clean that up. All right, so uh, we're back and all the soldering's done and uh, the board's ready to go. The BGA chip has been replaced. Uh, visually, it looks right. Looks like all the pads are uh, connected from you, that you can see from the side. Um, and we're going to connect it to the computer, see if any smoke comes out, hopefully not. And uh, then we'll run uh, a test with the AVR8 soft processor to see if it's uh, behaving like it should. So here we go, about to apply power to the newly resoldered board and let's see what happens. All right, it looks good. Uh, no heat. So uh, I think it looks good. This is what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, let's just pan up to the computer. I've got the Pelio quick start uh, ready to go. Let's uh, upload it to the board. Now this is using a custom, uh, a modified version of the AVR8 soft processor to accommodate the new board. It's just really uh, UCF file changes. Uploading to the board. Uh, sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's really fast. Depends on what the computer's doing, I guess. All right, well, that's cool. So looking back at the board, that blue light indicates that um, we do have a program bit file and uh, the blinking light is for the serial ports so let's go back and let's uh, hit up the serial monitor and see if it's transferring the ASCII table and uh, it is alright so in summary um, I think that uh, we just did some initial testing um, but the initial testing shows that we at least got power. Uh, so power and ground pins all seem to be soldered and working correctly. And uh, we're transferring serial uh, information. So the serial pins are connected properly. We haven't done uh, complete testing of the I.O. pins or um, the connections to the SRAM chip. Uh, but I'm pretty optimistic that they'll, they'll be fine. Um, I'll give an update if they're not. And uh, you know, just to prove that it's it's not a fluke, I actually made two of them. I did another one with the same technique, and uh, it's behaving the exact same way. So um, I think that uh, this is uh, proving that you can solder BGA chips at home on your pancake griddle. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay.